happy Monday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com. Welcome aboard. This is episode 278 of The Daily Dope, and it is Monday, April 8th. <laughs> hey, it was the home opener for the Cubs, too, and they actually won, won big. Thank goodness, boy, they've been looking pretty bad. Anyway, welcome aboard. Welcome back. I know I was off on Friday last minute. I had to uh, do my uh, cool uncle thing out of the blue. Yep, had to go watch my niece and nephew, so there was no show. Then I was going to do one on Saturday, and then the whole weekend was just kind of a... I don't want to say disaster. It was just not... uh, I was not able to... uh, kind of make my own plans let's say so but everything's cool everything's great do want to mention uh that uh today was i was very very busy this afternoon i didn't have a lot of prep time so there is no tabletop gaming news tonight sorry about that but i am going to unbox and take a first look at judge dread the cursed earth from osprey games i have been really looking forward to checking this out because I'm a big fan of Pure Sylvester's The Lost Expedition, as well as the new expansion that came out, um, The Fountain of Youth and Other Tales. I think it's Other Tales, Other Mysteries, something like that. Uh, But pretty cool. This is going to be a little bit different than The Lost Expedition, I understand, and I'll talk about that when I do the unboxing. do want to mention, because this is a live stream, chat is available on YouTube. So, if you've got uh, a question, feel free to ask. If you want to just say howdy, by all means, do so. And if there's something about the Cursed Earth that maybe I gloss over and you want to get a closer look at, by all means, chime in. I will respond. Do want to point out, chat is not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the stranger commenters at bay. If you like the video, by all means, please give it a thumbs up if you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you like those, please subscribe. And don't forget to ring that little bell because that will not only notify you when there's a new video up, it'll also tell you when the stream goes live within, I think, about five minutes or so. (laughs) So, I don't know. All right, so anyway, I also want to point out if you do like thegaminggang.com, or if you happen to check out the videos on the Gaming Gang channel here, like, say, I don't know, the Daily Dope that you're watching now, please tell a friend. It's a great way to uh, actually grow the website. Actually, the website's doing great. I pull in about 100,000 unique visitors a month. So that's not uh, it's not too shabby. But this channel should have some more subscribers. So please tell your friends. All right, so I am going to get into my unboxing of Judge Dredd, The Cursed Earth, in just a few moments. Do want to talk about what's coming up on shows this week and even into next? Fingers crossed that I don't get dragged off someplace. But tomorrow night, I am going to be reviewing WrestleNomicon. Yes, WrestleNomicon from Art Dream Publishing and Fire Opal Games. This is a pretty bizarre, pretty wild smackdown between Cthulhu and Haster, right? I think some people pronounce it Haster, but uh, I've always heard it Haster. So that is on tomorrow's show. Wednesday for War Game Wednesday, we are going to unbox and take a first look at the brand new deluxe edition of the Dark Valley from GMT Games. This is designed by Ted S. Racier. This is an Eastern Front grand strategy game. So you're looking at 41 to 44. So obviously it's World War II. It's a much bigger box now. And I gotta be honest, this game box is way heavier than I recall the the original edition. For one, I'm sure it's now got a mounted map, a mounted board. Whereas the, uh, the original Dark Valley had a paper 
board, a paper map, whatever you want to consider it. So that will be on Wednesday's show. On Thursday's show, yes, I am finally going to be able to review John Carter of Mars, the role-playing game. This is the collector's slipcase, which has the core book and the first supplement as well. I'm going to review both of these. So that will be on Thursday's show. Friday, I am going to review Rotec Crisis Point from Solar Flare Games in uh, in conjunction with Harmony Gold, who uh, is losing the license to Robotech, I believe, later this year or early next. I think, I'm trying to remember if it's 2019 or 2020. I think it's 2019. But my good friend over at Solar Flare Games, yes, D- Dave Killingsworth sent this along for me to review. This is out now. It's available now. And then next Monday, as long as things do not change, I shall be reviewing Kanban, the driver's edition from Stronghold Games. Yes, finally going to get my review of Kanban out there. Uh, It's been getting pushed back a little bit. um, For one, because WrestleNomicon is actually currently on Kickstarter right now. So I did want to get a review video out there for it before that Kickstarter ends. I know I did do an unboxing of it uh, late last week, but did uh, did get it to the table, did get to play. That's actually one of the bonuses of keeping an eye on my niece and nephew is I get to do some gaming normally. So uh, so that is what I've got cooking. So before I jump into the unboxing, do want to remind everybody out there that yes, the gaming gang and thus the daily dope are not for profit so if you enjoy the website if you like the videos then by all means please let me ask that you consider to make a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals yes Lil Bub's Big Fund does care for special needs animals it's grants that go out to organizations that care for special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. And better than me, how about we hear from Lil Bub herself? That's right. Good job, bub. So, as I pointed out, uh, since uh, I I don't do this for a profit, thank goodness. If you do like the show, if you like the Gaming Gang website, consider making a a small donation, a couple of bucks. And if you do so, please shoot me an email. My email is actually located down in the corner right there. Just let me know, and then that way uh, I will give you a special shout-out on the following show. I have had some people email saying, hey, I made a small donation or I made a donation. They don't necessarily tell me the size of it. Uh, and they've said, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to say anything. Just want to let you know. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. That's kind of how I look at things too. As far as um, a lot of the charity stuff that I'll do, I don't really talk about it. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, there's, I get a lot of games and stuff and a lot of the games aren't behind me. Because they uh, they get donated. I'm not going to get into the discussion about that, but uh, try to get them into some homes, or I shouldn't say homes, in the hands of people who are probably going to get to play them a lot more than I do, or who uh, a lot of people are going to get an opportunity to play those games. Hey, no enemies here has popped in. How's it going, Dan? Good to uh, good to see you. Good to see somebody popping into chat i was a little worried <laughs> i was like oh, i wonder if i'm just gonna be talking to myself tonight which is okay it's never a problem that's no big deal but uh 
I know because I didn't have a show on Friday, it kind of throws people off a little bit. And I know it was kind of last minute that I had uh, pointed out that I'm going to unbox and take a look at the, the Cursed Earth tonight. But uh, yeah, things were kind of up in the air. So yeah, good to have you popping in, Dan. Uh, for those of you who do not know, no enemies here. Actually, uh, I want to say it's Saturdays. Maybe I'm wrong. I apologize if I am incorrect. But on Saturdays, uh, it is all gaming news. It's mainly focused towards conflict simulations and war games. But uh, Dan does bring you pretty much a lot of the gaming news. So, fortunately, as I mentioned, didn't have prep time today. So, <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any news today, which I guess some people will like because there are some folks out there who just hate when I do the tabletop gaming news. I don't know why. I have no idea, but I like it, and most of the other people do too. So let me grab a quick sip here, and then we will jump into the unboxing. One thing I do want to mention, you'll notice... Um, for, for a couple of weeks, about two, three weeks, when I would transition to an image, it was like a really harsh boom. I hated that, right? Because that wasn't what my software originally would do. So I'll give you an example, right? So boom, boom. So there, we got a nice fade. We got a nice fade in, nice fade out. Well, there was an update to the software and it messed it up. And it was, not only was it like a really hard cut, to the images but it almost almost had like a little delay too so i'd like you know click to change you know the scene and it would be like okay come on come on so hey today i was complaining about this so today i'm sure i had nothing to do with this today there was a new update to my software and they went back to the images looking the way that they do so uh so yeah so uh dan says Thanks, Jeff. So uh, hopefully I was right. I think it is Saturday. No Enemies here does share a lot of tabletop gaming news. So uh, so pretty cool. Pretty cool. So just sh sharing a little shout out for Dan out there. So Redfield RE is someone new. Hey, welcome aboard. It says, yay, I haven't missed it. No, you have not. All you have missed is uh, me kind of uh, rambling on as I usually open the show. By doing so, uh, because this is a very, very casual show. But without further ado, let's start talking about Judge Dread, the Cursed Earth, which is from Osprey Games. It is designed by Pierre Sylvester, with artwork provided by Dan Cornwell and Rufus Daglo. Hey, wait a second. There wasn't supposed to be an extra image in there. Hey, told you I didn't have a lot of prep time. Missed that. That slipped under there. <laughs> anyway, Rufus Daglo. Hmm. Why does that name ring a bell? I know he's a comic. I believe he's a comic book artist, but I'm trying to trying to remember what he may have worked on. Oh, okay. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. But Judge Dredd the Cursed Earth is for one to four players. Age is 14 and up. It plays in 30 to 50 minutes. And it carries an MSRP of $35. It is out right now. It is available right now. And let's switch on over to the other camera here. Bingo. So I've got it right here. Of course, this is a fairly small footprint box, uh, just like the Lost Expedition was. So uh, as I was kind of uh, leading up to this last week, I was talking about how the Cursed Earth is, is a famous story arc for Judge Dredd, for, uh, I, I want to say it's from 2000 AD, that uh, weekly comic out in uh, the UK. Here, I read it when, gosh, this would have been, I don't even think I was in high school yet, so I think it was probably about 1980. I uh, was in a comic book store that my brother and I tended to go to quite a bit, and I started picking up first comics. And uh, that was the first time I was introduced to American Flag by Howard Chaikin. And the thing that blew me away about Howard Chaikin's artwork and, and the story in American Flag, number one, it was like a mature story. It wasn't necessarily, you know, R-rated or anything like that. But uh, his artwork was so much different 
than what I remembered him doing in the Star Wars comic. Because I remember the first few issues of Star Wars after the first mo- after the first movie, um, when Marvel came out with the comic book, the artwork was horrible. I was like, oh my gosh. And here it turned out, it, that was Howard Chaykin. <laughs> I was like, what? But anyway, so I picked up Judge Dredd because first comics started collecting story arcs from 2000 AD. And I remember reading The Cursed Earth, which I thought was was pretty cool. Now, I know Judge Dredd isn't everyone's cup of tea. Now, I might as well take the shrink off. While we take a look at the back of the box here, uh, get rid of some of the glare. I know that uh, Judge Dredd is not everybody's cup of tea. I remember Cubicle 7 Entertainment. Uh, my good friend Dom over at Cubicle 7 uh, three years ago, I did an interview with him, and he was talking about, yeah, Cubicle 7 was going to do a Judge Dredd role-playing game. And then they didn't. And <laughs> I asked him a couple years later what had happened. And when I first interviewed Dom, they Cubicle 7 was doing a lot of, um, a lot of publishing for other creators, kind of like Modifius Entertainment does, right? So Modifius publishes a lot of like say free league publishing uh they do stuff for uh sarah newton's mind jammer press things like that well cubicle seven decided hey they weren't going to do that anymore they were just going to focus on their own ips and uh dominic told me uh the reason why they didn't do a judge dread rpg is because he wasn't a fan of judge dread <laughs> he didn't like judge dread i was like oh okay all right so we see it says, for years, he's been the law in Mega City 1. And no, I am not going to do any sort of Sylvester Stallone impersonation here. But it's now time for Judge Dredd to bring justice to the rest of America. It's time for him to venture into the cursed earth. Lead a team of judges as they fight through dinosaurs, mutants, and the land itself to hunt down a citizen harboring a deadly disease before a gang of criminals gets to him first. Based on the best-selling The Lost Expedition... Judge Dredd the Cursed Earth introduces new rules and mechanics such as psychic powers and radioactive landscapes and features a brand new storyline with artwork from Dredd artists Rufus Dayglow and Dan Cornwell. On an impossible journey through radioactive hell, can even the judges survive the Cursed Earth? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so one of the things that I found out so, okay, so uh, just like The Lost Expedition, this kind of opens up like a book, right? Uh, oh, no, wait a second. Lost Expedition, it's a regular box. I think. I don't know. I forget. All right, so I was going to say, I have found out that this actually is not completely based on the classic Cursed Earth story arc. I was like, what? So, um, which I kind of thought, first of all, I thought it was kind of kind of interesting because, oh, see right here, we got Judge Anderson. So, the um, thing that threw me off is because in The Cursed Earth, the storyline, and I talked about this a little bit last week, if I remember correctly, the storyline is that there's a, um, an epidemic that breaks out in Mega City 1, and and all these people are dying, and they send Dread out to get the um, the antidote, the cure from Mega City Two. So Mega City One is supposed to be like New York, and Mega City Two is L.A. So he has to cross the cursed earth, you know, the rest of America, because a lot of people don't realize, even though Judge Dread is a British comic. It does not take place in England. It takes place in what used to be the United States. But um, so I find out that this this isn't this isn't that storyline. It's similar as we heard. It's uh, there's a character that you're trying to track down who's almost like a typhoid Mary, I guess we would say. Um, but it is not the actual cursed Earth. But there's something that I will mention when uh, I'm done taking a look at this, that I found out that's actually pretty cool. Although those of us in the U.S. might have a hard time tracking it down. Okay, so uh, we've got a little bit of a comic. 
Brian Boland's artwork, I gotta say, in Judge Dredd was just my favorite. Loved his covers. Uh, as far as I understand, this is all new artwork, so it's not uh, not rehashing, recycling any of the artwork from Judge Dredd comics. But um, Brian Boland, I just used to love that. I love his artwork, loved his covers, loved his interior art. And then it was funny, because I, I read a lot of Judge Dredd for about five years or so. At one point, I was like trying to get my hands on anything I possibly could. And uh, I was just checking our drop frames. We're looking good. We're looking good tonight. Only had uh, a couple of drop frames so far, so that's cool. Uh, but anyway, um, it was funny because I would be reading Judge Dredd, and then it'd be like, oh, crap. This isn't Brian Boland's artwork. Because some of the artwork was kind of more missed than hit sometimes. And uh, it was kind of funny. I'd be like, oh, crap. Okay, so game overview. Uh, in Judge Dread the Cursed Earth, you will be guiding a team of judges as they cross the Cursed Earth in search of Max Normal. Hey, isn't I think that's a character from another storyline, if I remember right. Uh, a citizen harboring a deadly disease who has fled Mega City 1. You must carefully investigate the hazardous locations of the Cursed Earth while moving quickly enough to ensure that Satellot and his gang of perps don't get to him first. On your journey, you'll have to balance your judge's ex expertise. I almost said experience. Expertise and limited resources with the needs of your mission. Resources are represented by tokens, while expertise is represented by symbols on the cards. There are three types of each. Rations, ammunition, and health. That's pretty much pretty, uh, pretty much from the Lost Expedition. And then expertise is survival, diplomacy, and psi, psychic ability. So, of course, we know Judge Anderson is going to be a psyker. Okay, so we've got encounter cards. So we've got yellow, our events, which are compulsory. You have to trigger every yellow box on a card. Red means choices. And blue are optional options. You can choose to ignore or trigger each blue box on the card. So it's showing us the resource symbols. So uh, there is radiation poisoning, I believe, in this game. So not only do, uh, do judges take wounds, but they'll also have radiation poisoning. Just like in the Lost Expedition, if you're a fan of that game, uh, you have to eat. So you're going to have to have rations. You're going to have to have food. You've got ammo. Uh, violence. Spend one ammunition or spend two health from a single character, or kill one character. Wow, that's uh, that's not a uh, that's not a good symbol to run across. So we've got uh, expertise symbols. So it's showing survival and diplomacy. Ah, uh, here we go. Here are the psychic abilities. So it says the psi expertise is a special one. When you trigger it, you'll have a choice. Either add the top card from the encounter deck to the end of the row of encounter cards, or lose one health from your Psy character, and then take the Psy action. Uh, you cannot lose two health from a different character when taking the Psy action. Okay. So we got the encounter symbols, so these are very familiar. If, we, if you've played Lost Expedition, you can skip the next card, swap cards, remove the last card, and death. So you remove one of your characters from play. Um, there's some new aspects where you're kind of tracking your enemies as well, I believe. So you, we have, see here, we've got enemy advance. So we're going to have two different tokens. Hey, Nefarious Coel is popping in. Hey, Nefarious, good to see you. Uh, so we've got uh, character death, locales, some examples. Cooperative rules for two to four players. Lost Ex Expedition, if I remember correctly, was uh, one to six because you had six different explorers and you could play it with um, with two two teams of three explorers. Now, one of the things is um, now this could be different, but in Lost Expedition. You, let's say you've got three players, you're basically just going to be deciding, okay, what are we going to be doing here? Because you you lay down the cards. Each of the each of the players has to lay down these cards that you'll get 
to kind of uh, put together almost like a storyline of different challenges that you have to overcome. And every once in a while, there's something good, too. So Nefarious says, pick this one up not long ago for a small solo travel game. Very cool. Very cool. Looks interesting. Uh, as I had mentioned before you popped in, I did, uh, I did hear that the storyline actually isn't truly the classic Cursed Earth storyline. It's kind of a new one. Okay, so we've got uh, different rounds. Talking about the round. Shootouts. So I think there's different difficulty levels, too. So we've got Dawn and Dusk. So like in the last expedition, we had Morning and Evening. Here we got some solo rules. Head-to-head, -head, two players. And some clarifications. Okay, so where are the, like the advanced rules? <laughs> I thought there were different uh, kind of difficulty levels you could set up. Maybe it's earlier on, because actually, for some reason, I, I almost think that this rule book's a little bit shorter than The Lost Expedition by maybe a couple of pages. Uh, sometimes, I, if I remember correctly, I think the optional rules for The Lost Expedition were actually in the front of the book, not the back. Oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Justice Department field ration. Uh, should we take a guess that this is where our little meeples are? Yep. That's it? Just little meeples? Of course, we got a punch board in here, so I'm sure we'll put those in there as well. Ah, okay, so a little disappointing. The, uh, the meeples are just standard little people. Would have been nice to see, uh... Well, yeah, yeah. Nice to see, like, maybe more of a Judge Dredd theme to them. But eh, that's okay. They're just little meeples anyway. You're just tracking the advancement here. Uh, one thing that I I thought I heard was that uh, the wind conditions are a little bit different. And in Last Expedition, you have to get all the way to the end of the, I want to say it's nine cards to be able to win. I, I understand that... Uh, you actually kind of shuffle up the cards and that uh, I think within the last three cards is where it could be the end. Uh, so Nefarious says, I see that the new Judge Dredd in the worlds of 2000 AD RPG is out. May have to use your <laughs> drive through RPG link for the uh, print on demand. Uh, yeah, to be honest with it, yeah, that'd be great, Nefarious. Thank you. Should point that out, uh, even though we're not talking RPGs, we didn't do RPG news. Uh, if you happen to go to any of the one bookshelf sites, be it Drive Through RPG or War Game Vault or Drive Through Comics, what have you, I ask if if you could please click on one of our links over at thegaminggang.com first. So actually go to thegaminggang.com, click on one of our links, and then that way if you make a purchase at say Drive Through RPG, you get a little piece of the pie. Uh, I have considered looking into the uh, worlds of twenty or twenty, the worlds of two thousand AD RPG. Noel, um, and why did I say Noel? It's Nefarious Coel. Duh. Uh, I have considered looking into it. Uh, I just don't know. I got to be honest. I am not like super familiar with a lot of the other uh, properties in two thousand AD. Um. Jeez, like there's uh like the there's like the soldier one. There's uh there's a few different ones. What wasn't it like Strongium Dog or something like that? Which I thought is kind of like in the same like setting. But I'm not positive. I gotta be honest, I am not overly familiar with 2000 AD the, as far as a comic. I always read Judge Dredd as stories that were actually um like issues that were a combination of all the various different uh, like story arcs. So for an example, I think if I remember right, I think 2000 AD is still a weekly. Whereas of course here in the U S 99% of our comics come out monthly. So what, uh, what first used to do is they used to take 
you know, like a story arc. And it was probably three weeks of the actual 2000 AD comic for Judge Dredd and put it together. So, uh, so Nefarious says, I'm not very well versed on Dredd 2000 AD lore, but certainly love the weird future stuff. Uh, I gotta say, Judge Dredd tends to have kind of a, a, some of the stories do have kind of a satirical bend to them. Especially, uh, especially the early stuff. So we've got uh, a couple of these punch boards. So we've got health tokens. We've got radiation tokens. That's ammunition. These are obviously rations. We've got dusk and dawn. And I see that uh, this is actually kind of like a badge. Cut like a badge. Same thing here, except we have the judge, which is dual-sided. Same thing. Uh, the judge player is kind of like the expedition leader per round is what I'm thinking in this game as well. So we've got that. Now let's take a look at the card. So we've got the characters here. And let's see how many of these judges I actually remember. So I have to say, I liked the Judge Dredd movie that they made not too long ago. I thought that was I thought that was pretty well done. I know it wasn't a big hit. Uh, let's zoom on in to the cards here. There we go. Get a better look. I mean, it wasn't a big hit, but it's kind of become kind of a cult classic now. And outside of some of the uh, some of the stranger stuff, like you know, like their bikes and things like that, that didn't necessarily look like Judge Dredd comics. Uh, I thought they I thought they did a pretty good job. I really did. So what we got here? So we've got Judge Anderson. So there's Judge Anderson and there is the little psychic symbol there. There's Dredd. All right, so uh, real quick, anybody out there know what Dredd's first name is? I'll give you guys a sec to pop that out there. Uh, I know it. I know what it is. Uh, like the movie, uh, Dread movie was awesome. Remind me of watching stuff like RoboCop and Die Hard as a kid. Yeah, you know what? It did. It did have kind of a like a RoboCop vibe to it. Plus, you gotta admit, is it? Uh, why do I want to say Keith Urban is the actor? But I thought Keith Urban's the singer. Anyway, the guy who plays Dread, his last name's Urban. Uh, he never took the helmet off, which was awesome. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, so, Dan over at No Enemies here is like, uh, first name. That's it, Carl Urban. Thank you, Nefarious. Uh, that's why I was like, it's not Keith. It starts with a K. What the hell is it? He plays, uh, McCoy in the Star Trek movies and stuff. Okay, so, uh, nobody knows his name. It's, uh, Joe Dredd. It is actually Joe Dredd. And never in the comic book have you ever seen... Joe Dredd's face. Judge Giant. Okay, yep, I remember Judge Giant. There's the Mean Machine. So Mean Machine's a bad guy. He's uh, part of this, like, weird family. Satellot. That I am not familiar with. That's not rigging any bells here. The Discipline. Oh, I should say the Disciple. Why did I say the Discipline? That's weird. Uh, no, don't know that one. But these are all characters you could be utilizing. Now, the Mean Machine, or Mean Machine, is from Cursed Earth. It, it is from the uh, that story arc. So, Nefarious says, hopefully they continue making another movie or series. Uh, yeah, I heard Carl Urban wanted, wanted to be in it. And I think, I actually think we've got a better chance of seeing it as a series as opposed to a movie. And I would not be surprised to see Amazon or Netflix or somebody pick that up as a series. So, oh, checking something out here. Yeah, it's, I'm looking at, uh, I've got one of these lighting umbrellas and it's sort of, uh, it's kind of weird, it looks, <laughs> Maybe it's always been like it, but it has like little holes in it. So I'm wondering what that could be from. I don't know. It almost looks like it's from heat, but there's no, there's no heat. 
where it's at. So, okay, sorry about that. There you go, Netflix. All right, so now it looks like these are different areas. So these are going to be different locations. So we've got the Sauron Valley. And something a little bit different about the areas, as opposed to uh, the Lost Expedition, is it looks as if that each of these areas has like a special uh, special effect of some sort. So we got the Sauron Valley, Tulsa Melts, the Bakersfield Spoils. Yes, I have I have been to Bakersfield, California a few times. So, uh, yeah, Nefarious, you're right. Amazon dropped their plans for that Conan series. I don't know. And they're wrapping up uh, The Man in the High Castle this year. So that will be the final season of that. It's kind of a disappointment. I had a blast doing the interviews at the round tables at Comic-Con. Rufus Sewell was really, really cool. Really nice. Uh, Adam Gulch. So we've got uh, nothing there. Bruner's Warplands. <laughs> the Slough of St. Louis. The Great Dust Bowl. Nebraska Fault. Terre Haute Pass. Twister Valley. Now, if I remember correctly, I think Twister Valley is in... Uh, I'm pretty sure it is in the... Uh, Cursed Earth storyline. Muty Country. That is from the storyline. Alabama, Alabama Morass. Or Morass, I should say. And there's Max Norrell. The end. So how many of these cards do we have here? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. I highly doubt you're going to use all thirteen, so... What I'm taking a guess is that uh, you're probably going to kind of shuffle these up. You're going to have your your max normal card off to the side here. You're going to choose so many of these cards, and then you're going to take, like, the last two and shuffle max normal into it. I think. I think that's how it's going to work. All right. So that is this deck. And, of course, as you can tell, these are large tarot size cards. Uh, I, so Nefarious says, I think the Alabama Morris Morass, I should say, location is the only one you can get food in reliably. Huh, okay. Uh, talking about the Lord of the Rings series that's going to be on Amazon, I don't know. I got to be honest, I do not have very high hopes for it. I do not. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Just like I don't have high hopes for that Tolkien movie. That's just, I don't know. Don't know. Just isn't jumping out. Okay, so got that. Put these cards. Oh, hey. Got the backing like that on the, on the judges. And then we've got, uh, no. Yeah, these are the judges. Then these are, the, these are perps. So maybe that's the head-to-head -head two player, right? One player's playing the judges. The others are. Uh, other players playing the perps, trying to find Max Normal before the other. So, got that. Okay, so now we've got all of the location cards. So in the Lost Expedition, basically what you do is you shuffle these up. And you're, I'm sure these are in order, right? Yep, they're in numerical order. So, of course, they're not in... Uh, numerical order now so nefarious says i'm just happy amazon video isn't just doing political and cop dramas all the time if their middle earth one actually comes through yeah that's true yeah that's true i w i gotta be honest i was super super surprised man in the high castle was as good as it was but i was at comic-con the uh the summer before it aired and we were able to, as the press, we got to go to the preview of the first two episodes. And it was open to the public. You had to have, they had to have tickets, right? So we went and it was at this, uh, this theater. But I mean, the theater was actually a theater theater. So it wasn't just a movie theater. <clears throat> and it was wild. Everybody got a copy of, of The Man in the High Castle. So everybody got a copy of the book. And it was 
free booze, and all the booze was either German or Japanese. So that was pretty wild. And then they had, like, little snacks and stuff. And it was funny. They were, like, basically pouring the booze down our throats. <laughs> it was like, here, take two or three with you. It was nuts. And it was cool. We got to see the first two episodes of the show. And then there was a little Q&A with the cast. So it was very, very nice. In fact, I think that was the highlight of uh, our press parties and stuff, in my opinion, that year. Okay, so we've got Satanus, Spider's Lair, Farmhouse, some muties, Giant Spider, Snared, Bounty Hunters, Stampede, I gotta say, uh, the artwork, some of the artwork's kind of, eh. <laughs> I mean, you know, just, like I said, I'm a Brian Bolin fan, and whenever I see stuff from Judge Dredd that's not Brian Bolin, I'm kind of like, eh. I mean, it's not horrible, but. So that's a Hell Trek breakdown. Wounded Dino. River Crossing. Spoiled Rations. Townies. Rad Storm, Abandoned Bunker, Raiders, Rat Swarm, Old World Ruins, Fresh Regen Food, mm, Delish, Dog Vultures, Requisitioning. I was going to say, I wonder, because it was just all the artwork is kind of showing the judges. I was like, aren't they going to show anything with like the perps in it? But right there, <laughs> Gila Bruja Attack. Doom Jacks, yep, I remember those from the uh, story arc. Weary Locals, Slavers. Their slavers are in the story arc. In fact, that's how Judge Dredd meets up with Tweak, who's kind of like a mutated, almost like kangaroo bear-ish kind of thing, who's psychic. So uh, actually, it's one of the big heroes of of the story arc. Uh, and then there's a biker guy. I'm trying to remember his name. Who's a, who's a character in that story arc. Razorweed. Metal Tree. Hungry Muties. Mutant Herd. Friendly Warning. Looters. Rad Sickness. Oh, it looks like uh, somebody's going to get radiation poisoning. Yep, Dan's got to head out. Hey, thanks for popping by, Dan. Have a good one. And don't forget, check out uh, Dan's uh, video channel, No Enemies Here. It's followed, quick slag, deactivated robots. Get some ammo there. Bruja Territory, Ambush, Judge Station, Endless Log, Saloon. Yeah, I'll have a drink there. Psychic dog. Uh, what is what is that from? A boy and his dog. <laughs> I remember that movie. I remember seeing that movie at a. I saw that at a midnight movie. I liked it. I thought it was a great movie. Evidence. Meditating. Dispensing justice. Dust storm. Cliff. Is that the guy's name? Oh, I'm sure. Uh, Biters, Neon Gulch, Local Dispute. Yeah, see, like, the artwork here? Eh, that's not, I don't know. It's all right. But, uh, yeah, like that, I mean, that's not knocking me out. It's not Brian Bolin. The Fury says, I watched a boy and his dog on Amazon Prime about a year ago. Speak of the devil. Yeah. Yeah, that's a classic. With, um, oh, gosh, um, well, Jason Robards does the voice of the dog. Don Johnson. Don Johnson plays the kid. Toxic Ground. Irradiated Vehicle. Lost Hell Trekkers. Pterodactyl. Toll Bridge. Pay or Die. Pushing Forward. Improvising. Pin Down. Foreboding. Geyser and Campfire. So there are 60 cards. 
So in Lost Expedition, if you go through the deck twice, then you lose, right? So if you need to reshuffle the deck a third time, uh, then you lose. I thought I heard through the grapevine that with this, it's one time through, and then if you haven't found max normal by the end of that, then you lose the game. So uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. So as I had mentioned before, uh, the, the way you kind of play <clears throat> is, uh, so for an example, the, the phases you've got, uh, well, you've got morning and evening in the Lost Expedition. I, this was what? Dusk and dawn, I think, right? Yeah, dawn and dusk. So probably very similar, but uh, in one, you're actually going to like play the cards in numerical order. So if you've got a few different players, like say you're playing with three players, everybody's going to have a hand of cards, like four cards, and you would have to lay them down in order. So let's say I was the first player, I would start off with that, and, and then the next player has to take their card that they play and for an example spoiled rations right spoiled rations would go ahead of this even though i played this card first let's grab just another one for the heck of it so 42 would come after this and as you're playing it you have to resolve these cards in their order and then in the evening it's just in the order that you play the cards so Nefarious says, I think it's one time through. Special rules for the psychic ability. Yeah. Um, like I said, that's what I had heard. I, I had heard that you play through the deck once. If you have not found max normal by the end of that, then you lose. Everybody loses if you're you know playing co-op. But uh, in the evening, it would be basically, so I would play that. Then whoever is the second player, they would play a card. And even though six is lower than 20, it would get played in this order. So it gets things get played in the order that they would be laid out. So that's how uh, the Lost Expedition works. And I believe that that's pretty much how Judge Dread the Cursed Earth works as well. So I had mentioned that uh, Tweak, right? So I was talking about Tweak is the like the mutant... Uh, like I said, it's almost kind of like a, uh, almost along the lines of a, like, a kangaroo bear mutant thing. Am I the only one who can see a Judge Dredd tank girl crossover? Why not? They did it with Batman. That's funny you mentioned that because I was talking about how when I first was uh, exposed to Judge Dredd, it was from First Comics. First Comics also published tank girl here in the u.s at about the same time and i had, i had uh, checked them out checked a few issues out uh i thought it was all right uh yeah i mean you know it was it, it didn't grab me like american flag and uh judge dread did so anyway so as i was talking about uh there's this tweak right this this mutant and you're able to uh Okay, so I'm trying to remember. There's a biker guy. So right in the in the original actual comic book story arc, it's Dr Dredd's the only judge who goes off on this quest to get the. I, want, I almost want to say it's like the Tutti Fruity serum, but it's like two D F R U T. You know, so it's not like two, the words Tutti and Fruity, but if when you read it, you see it's Tutti Fruity. Uh, so he goes to get the, the Tutti Fruity vaccine from Mega City 2. But he's the only judge who sets out. Along with him is this, like, biker guy. And I want to say it's, like, Harvey something or other. And then, you know, there's other characters, too, who are, like, just cannon fodder. But he's the only judge. And then they, early on, they, they save Tweak from these slavers. So, like, the main characters in the story are Judge Dredd, this biker guy, like I said, Harvey something, I think it's Harvey, and Tweak. But they're not in this, right? Judge Dredd is in this. But I heard that there are promo cards for this game 
in, I, I want to say it's Judge Dread Magazine, which I think so there's a bug flying around suddenly. Hey, it warmed up here, so now I got a bug flying around. Um, it's Judge Dread Magazine. I think it's issue 405. And I think Judge Dread Magazine is from, I think it's from Titan Comics, Titan Entertainment, what, what have you. Um, but I, I want to say it's issue 405. They have two promo cards for Judge Dredd, the Cursed Earth, and it's the Biker Dude and Tweak. So I'm actually <laughs> trying to take a look to see how I can get my hands on Judge Dredd Magazine issue 405 to get these promos. Now, uh, there's a comic store, which I'm friends with the, the owner. There's a comic chain in Illinois um, called Graham Crackers Comics. And uh, there's one that's not far from me. I might take a look to see when does issue 405 hit and go pick it up because I would like to have those, those two characters who are from the real Cursed Earth storyline. All right, so that is it for tonight's show. Obviously enough, I will be having a review of the Cursed Earth probably next week, to be honest. I, I wanted to play it this weekend when I was over with my nephew Cameron because we both really like the Lost Expedition. But I was like, no, no, I promised I'd do a, I would do an unboxing and a first look. So uh, definitely I will be getting that to the table this week. So expect a review of it next week. All right, so on tomorrow's show, as I mentioned before, I am going to be reviewing WrestleNomicon from Fire Opal Games and Arc Dream publishing so i will give you my thoughts on that uh while the kickstarter is still going so if you're interested you'll be able to jump on board and actually save some money over the retail price anyway as i like to say when you're not watching the gaming gang channel here on youtube please visit gaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news reviews comics movies tv by now you know the drill get your geek on at the gaminggang.com uh so redfield re says looks like a neat game yeah i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna check it out like i said i like the lost expedition i know there are some tweaks to this it plays a little bit differently uh i would think there's probably maybe a little more strategy in it than lost expedition i'm not sure but i will find out anyway i will be back tomorrow so enjoy the rest of your monday thank you very much for popping in and joining me in chat as well tonight and for everyone who is watching live or who ends up watching this video in the future, thanks very much for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.